Hello and welcome. Today we're working on Intermediate Accounting Chapter 4. Uh, we're going to do a condensed income statement and we're going to work on comprehensive income, the statement and then some other comprehensive income items. So welcome, my name is Jeff and I help you finally learn financial literacy. So we got three problems we're going to work on, just the income statement and then two others. So let's get started. The first one, was we're going to prepare an income statement, and it's a condensed income statement uh, with a separate comprehensive income statement attached to it. So here's our given information. We have sales of uh, $400,000, cost of goods sold $120,000, selling and administrative expenses $60,000, the gain on the sale of land is $20,000, we have an unrealized gain on available for sale investments interest expense, a gain on discontinued operations of 36000 Our income tax rate is going to be 40%, and we had dividends that were paid of 5000 So I've kind of built already the income statement a little bit. We're going to grab our sales. We know our sales are 400000 That's given. We're going to do next cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold is given, or cost of sales. That's going to be 120,000. Now, sales minus cost of goods sold is going to give us gross profit. So 400,000 minus the 120 is, I'm sorry, the uh, should be the 120. And so we have 280,000 is our uh, gross profit. Our SG&A expenses are given to be 60,000. And so our income from operations, we're going to subtract, take the 280 minus the 60,000, and we'll have 220,000. So this is the given information, and we supply then the gross profit and income from operations. Now, we have other revenue and other expense. The other revenue would be the gain on the sale of land. The gain on the sale of land, not the unrealized gain. That's going to be a uh, comprehensive income kind of idea. So the gain on sale of land is going to be 20000 and we're going to put it in the next column over to the left. And we have other expense, which is the interest expense, which is 9000 and we'll make it a negative number. So what we bring over here is going to be the 20 plus the negative 9, that's going to be a positive 11000 so we're going to calculate income before income taxes, or sometimes it's called earnings before taxes, or EBT. It's going to be the 220000 plus the 11000 so 231000 Now our interest expense is going to be built on this. So 231000 times 40%, 0.4, means we have $92,400 in income tax expense. So our income from continued operations is going to be 231 minus the tax. And so our income from continued operations is 138,600. Now that's what happens with our normal operations. Now, we also have things that happen every year. Maybe we discontinue a segment of our business or or we have some unusual items. And so those go below the continued operations below tax expense into uh, discontinued operations. So since we have taken out tax here, then these below would be net of taxes. So we have discontinued operations. We have a gain on discontinued operations. Maybe we closed, decided to close a segment of our business. We sold it. We sold it for a $36,000 profit. So our gain from discontinued operations is going to be 36,000 that's given our taxes are going to be 40 percent so we're going to take 36,000 times 0.4 so that's 14,400 so our gain is going to be 36,000 minus the 14,400 so our gain net of tax is 21,600 we're going to add that to the 138 plus the 21, and we have net income is 160,200. 
All right, now, if we want to show the comprehensive income, we're going to grab the net income again. So we'll point to the net income. And we have an unrealized gain on available for sale investments, net of taxes of $4,000. So what do we have? We had unrealized gain of $10,000. Now, comprehensive income includes any gains or losses that are not owner transactions. So this counts. It's an unrealized gain on available for sale investments. So it's $10,000 minus the $4,000. So it's going to be $6,000 is our unrealized gain. That's going to be part of comprehensive income. So our comprehensive income is going to be $160,000 plus $6,000. So our comprehensive income in this case is $166,200. All right, let's continue the idea of comprehensive income. So let's give you some information on number two. So we're going to talk about other comprehensive income or OCI. This is our first example. We'll do another one here in, in, right afterward. So our facts, we have net income of 110000 The dividends that were declared and paid during the uh, 2020 year were 18000 We had beginning balances of common stock of 300000 APIC or additional paid in capital of 70000 Retained earnings of 50000 And then this accumulated OCI is 60000 Now the other comprehensive income for 2020 only is an unrealized gain of 30,000. So here's what we want to do. We want to calculate, we don't need to do the income statement because we already have net income. We're going to prepare the comprehensive income statement under the one statement approach, under the two statement approaches, and then we'll prepare the statement of stockholders equity. So all this is the given information. We may have to refer to it, but let's get started. So first one here is under the one statement approach, we're going to put everything together. So our net income here is given, it's 110,000. So our net income is 110,000. We're going to have other comprehensive income of 30,000. So our comprehensive income is going to be the 110,000 plus the 30,000. So our comprehensive income idea is 140,000. Okay, that would be on the one income statement. We just add it to the bottom. On the two statement approach, we would have the 110,000, just like normal. And then we'd go to a separate statement, comprehensive income statement. And we would start with net income. We start with that 110,000. And then we say, we're gonna add the other comprehensive income, the 30000 So our comprehensive income then is going to be the total of 140000 All right, so that's the two-statement approach. Very similar, but we might have several things that are comprehensive income. Now, let's do the statement of stockholders' equity. So this is stockholders' equity, our, our Situation. So what is in stockholders' equity? We have common stock, we have additional paid in capital, and we have retained earnings. So you're used to seeing those three items in stockholders' equity. What you may not have seen before is accumulated other comprehensive income. So if we have a, a stock that has unrealized gains, then that accumulates over time. So accumulated other comprehensive income is similar to retained earnings uh, for regular income. So it's it's the accumulated other comprehensive income. So let's start uh, with what we know. So what's our beginning balance? Let's go to the very beginning. Our beginning balance is 300000 for common stock, 70000 for APIC, 50000 for retained earnings, and 60000 for accumulated OCI. All right, so I'm going to put in 300000 is our beginning common stock. Our additional paid in capital is 70,000. Our retained earnings is 50,000. And accumulated OCI is 60,000. All right, so what we have, we need to add 
the total 300,000, 700,000. So I'm just going to do a sum here. So the total beginning stockholders equity is 480,000. So on the left, what we're going to do is put net income, we're going to put it where it belongs, and then dividends and other comprehensive income and so on. Now, what's our net income? Remember our net income is 110,000. Well, what, where does it affect our stockholders' equity? Well, it's going to affect our stockholders' equity in retained earnings. So we're going to add 110,000 to retained earnings. And I'm going to ha go ahead and add, just copy all the, all the way down. So it increases, net income increases retained earnings, which increases stockholders' equity. All right, the next one is dividends. Now, what are the dividends? Let's go back up here. Dividends are 18,000. Where does that affect our stockholders' equity? Does it affect it in common stock or APIC or accumulated OCI? Remember, dividends are coming out of retained earnings. So it's gonna be uh, minus 18,000, make it negative. And then other comprehensive income, we're going to have 30,000 is in the category of other comprehensive income. So that is the total 30,000 that increases other comprehensive income. So what we see is we can add this up and get a total ending balance or we can go across. So let me just do this. Let me calculate this, see if I can do this quickly. Uh-oh. So 300,000, 70,000, 142,000 for retained earnings and uh, accumulated OCI is 90,000. So we can still calculate So our ending balance of stockholders' equity is 602000 It's made up of four components, common stock, APIC, retained earnings, and accumulated other comprehensive income, or accumulated OCI. All right, one more little example on comprehensive income. We're going to add a little bit to it. It's going to be a little more, um, uh, a little more condensed. So let's see what we can do on this. So we're going to do the same kind of calculation. We have beginning balances of retained earnings, common stock, APIC, and other comprehensive income. And for the year, we've got net income, dividends, other comprehensive income. We have an increase in common stock, and we have an increase in additional paid in capital. All right, so we're going to have to add another line. So we're going to add a line here that increases um, our sale of stock. We're going to just add an extra line here. All right, so what is our common stock. Our common stock starts at 200000 Our additional paid in capital is 50000 Our retained earnings is 120000 Our accumulated OCI is 40000 And so I'm going to add all this up. The sum is going to be 410000 I can go all the way down. All right, what about net income? Net income, 85000 is going to increase our retained earnings. What about dividends? Dividends is going to decrease retained earnings, 14000 Other comprehensive income, we have a decrease in 16000 And then we sold stock. So... Common stock went up 50000 and additional paid in capital, or APIC, went up 20000 So we need to just sum the total of each column. So common stock is going to be 250000 APIC in, uh, grows to 70000 Retained earnings grows to 191000 and accumulated OCI is 24000 goes down. So for the end of the year, we're going to report stockholders equity going from 410,000 to 535,000.
All right, so this is how you do an income statement that's condensed format in Chapter 4, how to do other comprehensive income, and how uh, comprehensive income works with the one or two statement approaches. Hey, thanks for watching.